Somebody just said, we haven't gotten there yet to reply to every tweet. I sat and looked up Best Buy right then and there. I could do it myself. So I don't know why Best Buy can't hire an intern for zero dollars and zero cents and do it. See, everybody fucking talks about it, but nobody does it. And what I'm obsessed with is this, that a little Jersey boy like me could go out and buy a camera for 300 bucks, sit down and put out content about the thing that I love the most, right? And compete with people like The Wine Spectator and Decanter Magazine and Robert Parker who've got 25 years of equity, who've got millions of dollars behind them. And that is a huge change. When I started really realizing it, I called the Zagat family. Do you guys know what Zagat is? Zagat ratings for restaurants? So, you know, in the US, there's a big rating system for restaurants. You might have seen it if you've ever been 25. Out of 25, they have, it was huge. It was a multi-million dollar business. The second day that Yelp was in the market, I called them and said, you need to pay attention to this right now because if you don't counter this, you're gonna be out of business in nine, in nine months, two years, three years, it really didn't matter. They completely laughed it off. Then I saw them a year later, and they were kind of a little bit more intrigued and now they call me every day saying help, and I'm like, asshole, it's over. <laughs> that ship has sailed. And so, what I'm excited about is this. What I wrote that book about that comes out in a couple weeks is this. That we live in a day and age that I am convinced that 85% of you that I'm looking at right now do not love what you're doing 150%. You just don't. And in my opinion, Three years ago, that was fine. But today, it's not. Because the cost of entry to be in the game around your passion is zero. It costs zero dollars to have a Tumblr account and let them host your domain for you. It costs basically 200 bucks, 100 bucks to buy a flip cam or an iPhone that has video on it if you want to create video. Or you can write or audio. Not everybody is extroverted as me. It doesn't have to be an online show. Not everybody is charismatic and handsome and smart as I am. I get it. But you have to know who you are. And companies need to know, have to know who they are. You can't be what you're not. And you need to embrace what you are. Culturally, that's what we deal with with the companies that we talk to. Know who you are. You know, the NHL wants to be the NFL. You're not the fucking NFL. You know, get over that, understand what you are, and execute against what you are. And I think the fact of the matter is that you can build your brand now by getting your hands dirty. You know, this crazy little thing that's super, super underrated. It's called working really hard. The fact that you can work really hard and actually build a business today is so different than it used to be. Because going to search.twitter and finding people talking about the things that you do is easy. And all you have to do is at reply them and talk to them. And there's a trillion niche sites around your subject. There's thousands, tens of thousands of wine blogs. And I don't care if they're number four on Alexa or compete or number eight million, it's a person. And actually caring about the people that talk about your brand, whether they have 400,000 followers on Twitter or seven, it's a fucking human being, you should give a shit. And plus, the person that has seven, oh, by the way, might have 400,000 one day. And so I think that we're living in this insane shift where clearly eyeballs are shifting. They're going in a different direction. People are consuming media in all sorts of different platforms. And the fact that we all as individuals have the ability to tap into that with work and skills. Obviously, listen, you can be as, pa listen, I'm passionate as crap about football. I cannot be an NFL quarterback. You know, I get it. So you have to know that part cold. But if you want to produce content, what I'm obsessed about is my friend who knows more about gardening than is healthy. But he spends 12 hours a day in forums and reading blogs about gardening. And if he was to cut out three hours of that and produce that content, he could quit his bullshit corporate job that he hates with his whole life and move to this. Now, not overnight, I get it, but I promise you, I'm sitting in these budget meetings. There's going to be a trillion dollars in ad revenue, in ad buys, in five years, and they want to spend it in different places because debating if television works, I get that it works, 
but please don't talk to me about the metrics of television when we stick a box in every 4,000 homes and count it as real. Stupid. What I know is this. All of us, every person in this room, no matter what business you're in, you're all in the same business as I am. We are in the eyeballs business. And wherever, I don't know about you guys, but every time somebody comes up to me and says, well, how's Twitter gonna make money or Facebook? I vomit directly in my mouth. <laughs> Asshole, when you have billions of eyeballs, you can monetize. And, and that's interesting to me. It's interesting to me that how many people don't get it. It's interesting to me of how many people don't do what they love. It's interesting to me how much everything's changed and we've taken it for granted. We're underrating what's happened here. The internet that we all know, and I know nerds, don't get mad at me, I'm, I'm gonna call it 14 years, I get it's been around for 40 or 50 or whatever the hell, but the internet that we know, the one that, if you lived in America when AOL started sending you CDs in the mail, when Windows 95 came out, that thing, that thing is 14 fucking years old. 14. Nothing happens in 14 years. The internet hasn't even had sex yet. <laughs> and it is completely disturbing the way we brand and build business, how we get to users. Facebook and Twitter and YouTube get all the credit. They're fucking tools on top of the bigger layer. Right? I mean, they're a marker. Facebook's a damn stamp stapler. You know, Twitter's a bunch of markers. You know, you know how many companies came up to me last year and like, I've got a Twitter account. What do you want, a fucking cookie? I'm gonna build a business off of that. What I know is this, to have the cost of entry be zero, like it is today, and to make excuses of why you're not building or why you're not caring, what I'm excited about is this. Everybody talks about how transparent and authentic it is, it really is, right? Because my DNA gets me excited when I see a lot of people up here. And I come up here and start cursing for God knows why. And there's a lot of people that don't necessarily like the over the top, extroverted bravado that I bring to the table. Other people like that it's authentic and real. The fact of the matter is this though. Because we have the ability to engage with people on a one to one level now, whether virtual in our underpants at home, or what? is very powerful because for my brand, it's been very successful. For the brands that have gotten their hands dirty and gotten over themselves and gotten into the trenches, it's been successful. And most of all, the consumer has changed. You know, I don't see a pretty girl now and grab a club and hit her in the head and drag her by the ha hair. We've evolved as human beings. So have the consumers. They don't want to be sold to the way everybody's used to. They want a piece of it. They want you to give a crap. They want to engage, whether you're a brand or a celebrity. And if you don't adjust to that, and if you draw lines in the sand of what you want instead of what they want, you have absolutely no shot of winning in this game. And so much more is coming. How many in this room are familiar with Boxy? B-O-X-E-E, -E, raise your hand. Not a lot. Please write it down and check out Boxy.tv. I think they might have bought the .com now. I don't know if Boxy is gonna be Friendster and be too early and not win, but I can tell you right now, the concept of Boxy is gonna win. And when cable television, at least in the US, it's something I understand a little bit better, when TV falls, people are gonna shit their pants because then things are gonna change because then brands are gonna be scattered. They're gonna try to figure out, because what brands like to do is they like to be really lazy. They like to just say, here's $12 million, we know we get the eyeballs, or they think because there's a box at every 4,000 homes, but whatever, and so, to me, what happens with that opportunity when everything shifts, when the eyeballs go in different places? I used to buy billboards and bus stop ads and taxi ads for Wine Library until I was walking down the street and everybody in New York City was coming at me like this. And I was like, shit, they're not looking at my ad anymore. Things change, people aren't thinking about them, and to me, there's a lot of excitement opportunities in it. And I know people are scared and shift, but the people in this room, unless you work for a gigantic company, if, if anything could happen that would make me excited, it would be that you gave substantial consideration. I know you guys know. Just by you guys being here, you know so much more than 99% of the people out there. But what I think all of us, including myself, have not totally, completely swallowed, completely put into our DNA, is how big this shift is how substantial this changes, and how real it is for you to build a business around the things you love the most. And I promise you, when you do something around the thing you love the most, 
You'll work the 16 hours a day to make it successful because you love that shit. And that work with that passion, that's who wins. It's obvious, we see it every day. That's the game. Because when you're 90 years old and laying on the bed going to the other place, you're gonna care about, you wish you spent more time with your family and you'd be like, you know what, I hated that fucking job. That was fucked up. And I don't want that to happen because now you can absolutely go and grab it. And listen, I don't want anybody to ch- you know, quit their jobs. You've gotta pay bills and you've got kids and rent. I get that. I'm talking about when you go home, stop watching fucking Lost. Stop playing Madden football. Stop hitting the Wii tennis racket for nine hours. Don't come to me and complain that your business blows when you've got the highest score on the Wii. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you. <laughs>